Hello everybody and welcome to Football Pass and it is a bright new world and we hope very much that you and we can be part of it. We are everywhere at the moment across the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, probably media. Me and the rest of the guys you're about to meet have never heard of and, and probably don't know how to find but that's not really the point. The point is we are going to hopefully bring you a conversation that involves insights, entertainment, opinion, from the world of football and beyond that will uh, become very much part of your daily and weekly lives. We also want Football Pass to do some good uh, and to raise some much needed money for those that need it at uh, a very difficult time for a lot of people across Scotland and across the world and more of that later. But of course, let's turn our attention right now to an enormous game in the offing this coming week, Serbia and Scotland for the right to go to the European Championships next summer. What a chance for Scotland. What a long wait it's been. Could it be over this week in Belgrade? To answer that question, hopefully let me bring in three of Scotland's finest with nearly 200 caps between them. Two have managed their country, one has captained it for sure. They are, of course, as you can see, Gordon Strachan, Alec McLeish and David Weir. Welcome all three to Football Pass. Let me start with you, Strach, my old mucker from TV Times. Uh, how excited are you about the prospect of Scotland getting over the line finally? Well, to, to be fair, we're, we're all excited. Um, but the thing is, I, I kind of get muddled up. I wasn't sure a couple of months ago what competition we were playing at at one point. Um, there was games <laughs> flying for everywhere. You know, there was a, the 2022 qualifications. Then there was a playoff, and I wasn't sure where we were. And uh, But I've been told that we've uh, got to a playoff position now. So well done, lads. That's fantastic. Um, so well done, Alec, for helping us get halfway there. <laughs> Um, uh, and doing your bit there and now we're hoping that Steve can take us right through with the, the, the group of lads that he's got uh, and I think everything points in our favour now uh, when I look back uh, I think Scotland suddenly began getting a wee bit of luck somewhere along the line which all, our pre all the previous managers will tell you the downfall was due to lack of luck <laughs> so I think Scotland are getting a wee bit luck now. Uh, when you think yeah. that we played recently and had no shots on target, and we got through, and then we think we're going to penalties. We're not very good at penalties. Then we score five out of five. So well done, lads. That was a test of your character at that point. And, and, and again, it might be the fact that there was no crowd at Hamden, where you know so that. There's something happening here that says that we are going to get through. Yeah. Alec, do you feel lucky like Gordon at the moment? Yeah, I do. It's a great run. Uh, Steve Don, you know, the eight games undefeated uh, speaks for itself. And, you know, he's a, he's a bit of consistency. There's been a good kind of nucleus there in, in the team. Um, you know, after a two off by Gordon, Gordon's narrow miss for the playoffs, then um you know very much in the first year experimented with with a lot of players and uh, you know i guess if if this is where we end up and we this this is the the cup final for us to get to the euros then that, that's fantastic we've, we've all made a, a a decent contribution i've got to say what about as a, as a former skipper of the team do you feel scotland's time is now I think Gordon made a good point about you just you do feel a little bit like it is kind of pointing that way for Scotland, which is kind of a worrying thing to be honest. In terms, you start to feel confident, which is never a good look for Scotland in the past. So um, it has kind of fell fell our way, and it's you know the ball seems to be dropping for us, which is nice, but it's still a really difficult game. You know, going to Serbia and playing in Serbia, I've been fortunate enough to play there. It was in a, a Champions League qualifier, and it was a you know it was a really really tense atmosphere, a really dangerous atmosphere. So I wouldn't imagine it quite be like that now, which again, I think is a wee bit of an advantage for us. But in terms of luck, it seems to be dropped for us a little bit. But I've got to be honest, I'm still really nervous about the game. And, you know, it's just been so near and, you know, and potentially so far as well. I think we're all desperate to get there and, you know, be a part of something that will be really special for the for the players, the, the management and the country as a whole. David, do you think he'll stick with the three at the back? Serbia normally also line up with a, a three at, at the back. So do you think Steve will stick with that? I think it would be a gamble not to. You know, as we said earlier, I think he's almost fallen in information now that he likes and is working for him. And, you know, the results speak for themselves. So I think three at the back usually allows you to get 
a couple of players up front as well, which I think would be encouraging. I think Dykes is, I've seen quite a lot of Dykes this season. I've been fortunate in, in Maro to get to a lot of games and I've seen quite a bit of him. And he has a hands full at championship level. I think the, you know, the Serbians will find the same. And I think he's very good at bringing other players in. He, he, he can like head it to players. He can chest it to players when it looks like he's going to head it. And he's got a real understanding, looks to be a real team player. And he sort of drags people with him which I think is really important as well in terms of he's got that kind of um, feel about him, that look about him that, you know, he's up for a fight and he's up for a challenge. And um, I think this game will be a bit like that. So it's uh, I'm quite optimistic about the team. And um, I think three at the back, I'd be very surprised if, if Steve didn't go that way. But again, who knows? It's a one-off game. It's almost like a cup final. And um, it might take penalties. You know, we might have to go down the penalties route, which has been a... A successful route for us in the past, obviously, in the last game. Alec, from a manager's point of view, nice sometimes maybe to throw a spanner in the opposition's works to come up with something they weren't expecting, but you risk then, don't you, undoing what has become such a reliable style of play for Steve in the last, what, eight games? Yeah, I, carry on as normal. That that would uh, certainly be, I'm sure, uppermost uh, Steve's thinking. Uh, as a, let's face it, as the hardest game of all, probably so far that he's had to face, um, and and this eight match unbeaten run, and well, this will be the ninth. But um, we know that the players have got the capacity to play in the system that, that they've been playing in. You know, with the Tierney in the back three, he's been playing there for Arsenal as well, and, and Andy Robertson bombing up and down um, the line. So. We, but we have a you know a much tighter understanding, and um, when we played in that system early doors, there was a lot of kind of carefree attacking, you know, uh, with Roberts, Robertson underlapping Tierney and Tierney overlapping Robertson. I, I guess this one will be a wee bit tighter. Kevin Gallagher scored a very very famous club goal, of course, against Barcelona, but was never prouder as a player than when he was stripped. For Scotland. This team, this is a young generation, this is a young team that can be together for this campaign and the next campaign and what it would mean for the country is a massive lift, a massive boost and not only that, not only just for the country, it takes it right to grassroots and the monies that they'll make for the, the SFA to get these competitions, they can share some and they can help grassroots and the uh, Scottish football I think would be on the lift again. And I think that's what we need. We, we need that bigger lift. I think we can be quietly confident uh, of going and doing it, uh, but it'll be a very, very nervous occasion. You know, played the nervous games. Uh, we played against Latvia, which was really, really nervous for me. Uh, we went out there and we had to beat Latvia to at least have a chance with qualifying for that World Cup. And it was so nervous. It takes you about 20 minutes to get into the game. And at that stage, the, you, you feel the crowd changing. You feel the atmosphere in your head changing until you get that first goal. And I think the lads are going to be like that on Thursday. I think they need that that chance. They need to, you know, settle in as quickly as they can and, and get rid of that those butterflies and nerves right away. Scotland don't want to pan not panic, Gordon, but, but get too concerned about how big a deal this could be. You know what I mean? You don't want to play the occasion, you want to play the game. It's the old cliche, but it's true, isn't it? Yeah, but I think, you still need that edge. You have to understand what it is. And I think anybody that's played in big games will, will, will know how important it is. There's an edge to it. Um, and you need that. And it's dealing with that edge. Some people can't deal with the edge or the expectation. Um, and sometimes, as you say, the crowd can affect you. But I think David's right. I think there's something about Serbia where I think they feel that a nation that's been badly treated over the years, for whatever reason, politically. But I just had that feeling when I was in Serbia, when I played there last, um, that they felt that they were a nation, you know, that needed a bit more respect than what they did uh, as, a, uh, as a nation. Uh, I felt there was an undercut in there of, we'll prove you wrong sort of thing, and everybody's against us, and uh, we have to prove you wrong. We're a great nation in our own right. Um, so that's what I felt about the Serbians, that are a right, there's a right bond between the players. And I think some of the players actually in Serbia play better when they get together as 
a group of players in an international setup. Some international setups find it difficult to bring all the players together and play as one, but I think they find it very easy. Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a patriotism, isn't there, around Serbia, a relatively young country. And as Gordon says, I like there's some real quality, maybe not of uh, five or ten years ago, but you think of Milinkovic Savic and Mitrovic, obviously, we know from English football at Fulham, Dusan Tadic, who obviously was in England until he moved to Ajax, but he's still very much a, a high quality player. There's some, there's some serious opposition there. They have got some an array of smashing players. You know, Mitrovic obviously doing well in England, and I worked with. Uh, Sergei Mal Malinkovic Savic at Genk, you know, I, I had him as a kid, you know, he was, I think he was 19 or 20 just coming into the team and and already you could see the quality, right foot, left foot, big kind of lopey runner, um, a little bit like um, Pogba at Man United in terms of running style, I'm not saying they're the, they're the same players, but he certainly caught the eye in Italy over the last three or four years and so much so that big figures are getting bandied about for them in the Premier League. That speaks to the coach who's been an extraordinary success. Bora Milutinovic has taken five different teams to World Cups and of course is a very proud Serb himself. He's been explaining all exclusively to Rodri Williams in Qatar. I remember other stories when I was going to Costa Rica. Okay. I decided to go in Glasgow, you know, Glasgow, with the team. I don't like to mention first Celtic or Rangers or Kilmore, no better, no, 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 I don't like to mention. But I come in Glasgow, beautiful stadium, full stadium. Scotland win 1-0 against Argentina and the Diego Maradona. If I tell you one, only one name, yeah. you have Tadic. He played great last year with Ajax, great player. You have so many goalkeeper, Mitrovic. Mitrovic, for example, he scored so many goals. We have the goal, but what is important? We have player with the talent. I'm sure they got to play it to show how they, how they are. Lucky at you. <laughs> Lucky at you. This is important. Sometimes the best team do not win. I prefer to be winner in this type of the competition. Why? Only one team. This is the great final for Serbian, uh, uh, Serbian football. So, obviously, Serbia Scotland is occupying our thoughts an awful lot, but we also want to get the boys to talk a little bit about their time in a Scotland shirt and obviously on the touchline in Gordon Alex's case, uh, managing their country. So, Strack, what about a favourite, a most uh, memorable moment or time for you as either player or manager? Uh, well, there's so many good times, you know, in the, the World Cups and things like that and playing. I mean, some stinkers as well, really. <laughs> so, um, I think, I think, this is serious. One of the most memorable, it just came up the other day, one of the most memorable moments in my Scotland career was telling James Bond to put his cigar out. And it was 1982 and me and Alec went to visit our families somewhere. We were staying in Sota Grande. And uh, we got back. In those days, you just had a, a, a telly to watch the game. And you had to watch it in a living room sort of area. And... Um, me and Alec had been to see our families and we were late back, so we tried to sneak into this room without Big Joe seeing us. And uh, we sneaked in, got us a tea, and Alec was behind me, I was on the floor. And after about 15 minutes, I smelled a cigar. And I thought, <laughs> typical me, I went, Oi, what's going on here? I said, there's athletes in here. He's, who's smoking a flaming cigar in here with us athletes? It might cost us a World Cup place. <laughs> and I just heard this voice. And I went, because it's pitch black, and my garlic just nudged me in the shoulder and went, I think that's James Bond telling you he's smoking a cigar. <laughs> I went, all right, okay. You do what you want, big man. You smoke away, your heart's content. So that is that's just come up recently in my World Cup memories. Um, but probably the biggest memory World Cup-wise is, uh, we've done two things, I like myself, we've been lucky to manage and play, but 
I think playing in the 1982 World Cup against that wonderful Brazil side uh, that we, we took the lead against, uh, which was unfortunate really because they were quite sedate until we scored the goal. Then they went on to pummel 11 daylights to us. Uh, 110 degrees weather. Um, so that was probably the most uh, memorable. But for, for the crowd, the crowd, uh, the team you're playing against, the heat, and um, swapping shirts with the worst Brazilian player of all time. <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> uh, like set of followers. Who's now probably sitting in Rio de Janeiro saying, I've swapped the, the, a shot with a Scott, the worst Scottish player of all time. <laughs> <laughs> when I come on in the no. last, uh, the last five, ten minutes of that game, Gordon, up in Seville, and I just could not breathe when I got on the pitch, trying, trying, to, get, trying to get the second win. We were 3-1 down, and then the, all of a sudden, the back four turned into a back one and the goalkeeper behind me because there was only a few minutes left, and... Three of the players, along with Graham Souness and one or two others, were surrounding Zico because they were trying to get his shot at so <laughs> <laughs> And then all of a sudden, they, there's a wave of Brazilians coming at us in the last couple of minutes, and I think Eddie had battered in another, at the fourth goal, you know. So um, from going to a back four, when I, when I ran on the pitch, it became a back one and the goalkeeper behind me. <laughs> One of my best experiences was against Brazil as well. I wasn't even actually playing. It was at the 98 World Cup. That was a sub. Yeah. We turned up for that game in Kilts. That was, again, that was one of the... Like, Craig Brown was the manager at the time, and we, we'd we kept that secret. We'd managed to all get Kilts kitted out, as you do for, for these big tournaments, get all the gear. And, you know, we'd kept that secret and managed to... We'd got on the bus and got to the stadium. We walked out um, onto that pitch, and the Scottish fans were already there. And we walked out in Kilts. And the noise that they made when we walked out, it was such a, again, another amazing experience, you know, walking out with these kilts on. And every, all the Brazilians are looking at you going, they're kit and flip-flops and shorts and all the rest of it. We've full kilts, ties, everything. Full mouth. Fantastic. Well, with, the, with, the, with the long socks and the skiing do down them? Everything. The full hit, yeah. I've still got it now. But I might not quite fit in it anymore, but I've definitely still got it. So it's... I managed to use that for my wedding as well, so it saved me a few quid as well. <laughs> the opening game of the World Cup, the full world watching everybody and watching the game, and it was uh, what a fantastic occasion that was. And to play Brazil in that game as well was, you know, was one of those things you'll never forget. That's the one thing I, I've been lucky with you, me and you, Matt, to go about all these World Cups and European Championships in the last 12, 16 years. The one thing I always thought was missing was the Scottish fans. When Scotland get to the next you know, tournament, hopefully the next one's coming up very soon, that we will add to the tournament. The Scottish people will add to the tournament. We'll all have these memories, um, add to the memories, just for ourselves, but for the whole world, who can see uh, these uh, funny wee white people, um, ginger-headed people enjoying themselves. Now you, the Scotland fans, want your say, and we want to hear from you. I was in primary seven when Scotland got to France 98 and never did I imagine for a second that I'd be sitting here at the age of 34, still awaiting the next time that Scotland took their place at a major finals. So to one game away is absolutely magnificent. It's a very exciting time. Steve Clark and the national side are riding a crest of a wave just now as well. Three really positive results in the last international triple header. And we'll go into the Serbia game not expecting a result, but certainly hoping and believing that we can do this. I think the, the thought of a nation that has struggled with the international team and, and experienced so many lows, to all experience the high of qualifying for a major finals would just be absolutely spectacular. It's such an exciting time and I think we should embrace it. We're quick enough to be downbeat when the national side are struggling. So let's actually enjoy this momentum that we seem to have. We've seen the likes of Wales and Northern Ireland do well at major tournaments, so why can't we? There's hope in the world, especially if Scotland can make it to a tournament. Imagine that. Um, I've been very privileged in that I was actually at uh, some of the games at Hamden um, on duty and the only thing that really, really hurt was that it would have been amazing for some of those moments for there to be fans in the stadium. Um, guys like Lyndon Dykes who played a blinder and were having 
you know, their, their debut with Scotland it never got the plaudits of having that big rapturous Hamden roar uh, to uh, give them the boost that they need and let them know they're doing really well. Um, it's a shame that that wasn't able to happen. Uh, that's the thing that's really sorely lacking through all of this. The team are doing great. Um, but I really, really feel they could have been even better if they had a hand and roar behind them living them on. So, 22 years we've been waiting uh, to finally get that opportunity to qualify for the major championships again. Serbia stand in our way. Um, they will be no mean feat there, a, a quality side uh, with uh, exceptionally fo talented footballers throughout the team, uh, playing for uh, really good European teams. Um, I, I'm quite the confident. I think we've done well in the last three or four games, showing that we can defend well and score a goal. Uh, and I think that's what's going to be needed in Serbia. Um, I can't see us going over there and steamrolling them. Um, however, it is Scotland, so you never know what will happen. Now, Kirsty O'Sullivan is an integral part of the Football Pass team, and she'll be getting all the best interviews. She's been catching up with the one and only Pat Nevin about all things Scotland. Pat, can I just take you back to Euro 92? Because you have first-hand experience of what it's like to play in a major tournament. Tell us about that moment in your life. Some of those memories from, from that tournament are the best memories of, I was going to say my football career, but no, my life, actually. And the reason, it wasn't always the games. I mean, I was very fortunate I played uh, against Germany and I played against CIS, kind of, you better call it, Russia. Um, and at the end of it, we kind of knew we'd done okay, but it was one hell of a group. Germany were all champions, I think. The Dutch were the European champions. I mean, thanks guys, great group. <laughs> but we really didn't let ourselves down. And we kind of were gutted that we didn't get through, but we, we came pretty close. But what was different was, that was the, the month when it all came together. And our particular memories of, you know, every game, our fans outsung everyone else. It wasn't cheap being over there. Um, in 92 and a lot of people stayed. I remember one day, the whole team got on a bus and went down into the park, this huge park where all the Scotland fans were staying in tents. And I promise you, it was early evening and it was really still and it was warm and the, the sun was just going down and the, they, were, they had campfires and stuff and the smoke was sort of billowing over and it was really quiet and I thought, this is like Braveheart after a battle. It's, it's really weird. This brilliant moment where they all, they didn't cheer it. They just, oh, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, lads? Hey. And it just started a chat. And I mean, there were thousands. And there was us. And it was a real bond that had started to grow around about that time. And certainly Andrew Roxburgh, it's a big, big part of that. He tried to build that between the Tartan Army and the players. So you talk about, yeah, great to play in the games. It's, you know, you, I, I remember playing against Brema and the players like Hullet and all that. I mean, top player, Red Van Blaster, that I've played against him before. But that, that's not the thing that I remember. The thing I remember was us and the fans. 98 is, is the last time, isn't it, that, that the nation made it to a major tournament. So what would it mean, David, to be seeing Scotland, hopefully, obviously, as you say, with supporters uh, at the European Championship at a major tournament next summer? Yeah, I, don't, well, I think we've all spoke about it and talked about it to, at length about you know the disappointment. And I was I was in that squad, kind of jumped on that last squad to to get to the World Cup and was managed to play, which was you know a great thrill for me. And then I've been involved in majority <laughs> disappointments. I think it means everything, you know, being so close and you know just even the talking about some of the memories for for being at World Cups as a fan or as a player or as a you know whatever it may be are you know, things that go with you to the grave. So we just we just want to try and get the country to experience that again. And you know, as Gordon says, the fans would bring so much to the tournament. I don't think footballers over the last 20, 20 years um, should get too down on themselves. Um, the reason being, when I, like Alec qualified, when I qualified in 82, or even going back to the 70s, the, the world of football has changed, completely changed since then. And it was literally Scotland had to play Czechoslovakia. There were three teams in the group, and that was just a playoff between Czechoslovakia. That was it. And, and it was the same, but you go back in 82, there's only maybe four teams in the group, and there's only two good teams, really. Um, so it was a lot easier to qualify then, far easier. Yeah, it, it does all feel a long way off at the moment, Alec. And yet here we are, just right in front of a game that could mean so much to so many. Scottish fans and, and, and obviously you. 
Yeah, I mean, we've all been um, tearing our hair out over the years, you know, trying to find a solution. And now there seems to be a wee bit strength. There seems to be more players playing in England again and playing at a really good level in England also. So, you know, we, we're, we're correct to dream about it, that this is the time. Um, Gordon rightly said about the, the contribution of the, the fans. The, the world doesn't know what it's missed. You know, 20 years without the, the Tartan Army being there is a big thrill for the rest of the world as well. Not only the fact that Scotland are playing in a tournament, but for the fans to get those opportunities to go back to uh, European or World Cups again. Thank you very much to both. Uh, Alec and Gordon, and of course for Davey, who has promised as soon as we finished with the programme, he'll give Elton John his glasses back. Now, Kirstine's been very busy and she explains more about the football pass and the goals it's trying to score. Football Pass is all about you, the fans, and features entertaining shows, exclusive interviews and the very best pundits. But at the heart of Football Pass is helping others, specifically those who really need your support right now. We're partnering with charities and community projects all over Scotland, and one of those is Well Fed. Managing Director Chris Gray and Karen McFadden from Football Pass explain more. Food insecurity is a very real issue. Um, it, it's, it's been around for a long time and it's certainly been amplified by the COVID-19 situation across the country. So we're, we're seeing more and more people reaching out for help and support. It's day-to-day -day challenges and trying to secure enough food, uh, but that also extends to heating for their house and, and just the basic essentials that most people would take for granted. It seems sad, doesn't it, that we're in this situation, but there are so many charities out there who are giving food out to people, not just to people who are unemployed, to people who are employed as well. Children are so important for the future. Um, I think if we can at least feed them and they get a warm meal every day, then you know that's going to go a long way to helping them. But hopefully we'll help them in lots of ways. I mean, I think we're going to try and find equipment that'll help them in schools and books and hopefully some iPads. It feels amazing to be able to actually help people and, and provide uh, some kind of support in a difficult situation. But at the same time, it's also it's, it's quite a stark reality that you see when, when you see the families that are living on the, the breadline where they're not sure whether they can eat that night. So th there's definitely a, there's a, an emotional element to it, but it also feels great to be able to help. The more money we can find to help kids get the equipment that they're going to need for the 21st century, then well, you know, all the better. Let's try and keep them fit and healthy and active and well fed. You can donate via our Just Giving page where all the proceeds will go to Well Fed and in turn directly help families that really need it. Thanks. Any help you can offer will be very gratefully received. Our goal at Football Pass is to feed 150 people who really need it this coming Christmas day. It only remains for me to say the very best of luck to Scotland. <laughs>